of God's children to say amen. amen. At this time, I'm going to have both of the musicians ease on out. They got to make their way down to Fort Valley. We have to do it without the music today. Ain't the Lord all right? If you have your Bibles, be so kind and turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. 2 Kings, chapter 5. 2 Kings, chapter 5. The story really goes verses 1 through 17, but for the sake of time, I would only read verse 1, verse 10, and verse 14. Coming from the New King James Version, it reads like this. Now Naaman, a commander of the army of the king of Sarah, mm -hmm. was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him, the Lord had given him victory to Sarah. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Verse number 10. And Elijah sent the messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. Conclude with verse number 14. So he went down. Every once in a while, you got to go down. That's right, that's right. He went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored yes. like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. That's enough. If anybody asks what preached the old preacher man without the music, <laughs> You tell him he came from 2 Kings chapter, yeah, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. And for a topic on this first Sunday of September, how about this? Lord, fix me. Lord, fix me. Ursus, thank you for your service. You may rest. Lord, fix me. So often, we want the Lord to fix us, but sometimes we get a little impatient and start trying to fix our own selves. Y'all ain't talking to me. I know I'm telling the truth because people spend all kinds of money going down to Miami, to Mexico, and to the DR, Dominican Republic. To get a little plastic surgery. To get a little BBL. A little fat transfer. Surgery. To fix that baldness yeah, on the top of their heads. Yeah, men, good God of mine, are wearing two pairs. They got men units now. Y'all know them? Y'all know weave? Now they got weave for a man. They, they got some glue that they put on a bald head, slap it on there, and fade it in with your regular hair, and you'll never know the difference. Good God Almighty, y'all ain't talking to me. Folks are, yeah, trying to fix themselves. They're all on all kinds of diets, drinking slim fads, and every fad disease, I mean, diet that come up, they are jumping onto it, and companies are making millions of dollars. Yeah, just to sell somebody a dream. The things we worry about the most. Yeah, it's probably the least thing that God is concerned about at all. We worried about the hour when you ought to be worried about the inner. Y'all ain't talking to me. Naaman was frustrated. Naaman was frustrated over his physical appearance. The outside. And what we really need, good God Almighty, is a full, yeah, a total change on the inside. Y'all gonna pray with me? 
Name him, y'all. Yeah, name him. Yeah, yeah. He was a chairman of the joint, yeah, chief of staff during those days. He was a military leader. Yeah, he was powerful, y'all. And he was somebody. He was considered the cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah, the upper crust, the upper shalom. Yeah, he was a commander. He was great. He was highly regarded. Yeah, and, 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 and he was powerful. He, he was positioned, and he was prestige. He was successful. He was a winner. He was wealthy. He was a hero. He was respected. He was admired. But it's amazing how those three yeah, those three little letters, this conjunction, this small little word can change everything. You better be careful about them butts in your life. When they, they, they folks come to you sideways. Yeah, I, I like your work on the job, but you ain't you ain't completing your task every day. Well, basically, you telling me I wasn't completing my task. You dressed it up. But see, the word but means to cancel out everything you said before that. It changes the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, so even though he had it going on like popcorn, he had a butt in his life. And let the truth be told, all of us have a butt in our life. Y'all yeah. yeah. ain't talking to me. Yeah. He had this skin disease. Some translations call it leprosy, depending on what translation you have. Yeah, and even though he had this position and power and prestige, he still had this issue. The fact is that Naaman was a leopard. Now, a leprosy is like AIDS in our day and time. Leopards are isolated. They are humiliated. They are outcast. Good God of mine, because every time they come around people, they got to yell out, unclean, unclean. Good God of mine, leprosy was contagious. So folks kept their distance. Right, right. Folks, yeah, I don't blame them. They kept their distance. And, and leprosy was probably at the beginning stage of his career. It probably was in a mild form. He was able to conceal it. Okay. He was able to put on clothes that would cover it up. What problems are you trying to conceal? What problems are you trying to cover up? What hurt are you trying to cover up? Yeah, what prevents you from getting close to folks? That's my question. What are you trying to cover up? Is it a lack of trust? Is it unforgiveness? Is it anger issues? Is it bitterness? Is it hopelessness? Or is it some form of addiction? He covered it up to look good on the outside. Yeah. But he was messed up on the inside. He was deteriorating away on the inside. Leprosy, y'all, yeah, is never visible initially. It always starts small on the inside. But it keeps on growing until you start riding away on the inside. Yeah, yeah. If anybody know what the smell of an open wound smell like, good God Almighty, it's a distinguished smell. Yeah. Um, leprosy is like being a little, a little pregnant. <laughs> Eventually, it's going to show up. <laughs> and you can't tell nothing when they one month pregnant. You wait till they get about six, seven months. It, it, it's going to show up. This leprosy, it turns your skin white. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, body parts become numb. Um, historians say that during the biblical times when the lepers, they would live in colonies. And the rats were so bad. And the rats could eat on your leg or on your foot or on your arm because leprosy numbs your body. They can't even feel that they're being gnawed away. Y'all ain't talking to me. And I'm here to let you know without Christ, you and I would be just like Naaman. 
Yeah, we will be riding away. But ain't you glad that you got Jesus in your life? Good God Almighty. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I got Jesus in my life. So here we is. We got this powerful man, but he has an issue. He's talking about it around the house. Then all of a sudden, yeah, one of the young ladies that they took from Israel, yeah, he had, she had enough sense to give him some advice. Good God, I'm on it. See, the Bible says, out the mouths of babes. And you got to be careful because sometimes it'll be the little ones that can teach you something. You, 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 ever, had, you ever had kids that ask you questions? It'd be having you tripped up like, where did you get that from? I don't know the answer to that. It was this little girl that was serving in Naaman's house that was carried away from Israel. She could have been bitter, but instead she became a blessing. She chose to become a blessing. Yeah, I believe this woman grew up, this little girl grew up in some Christian house. Yeah, when she came, before she got snatched away. Because it says in verse number three, I wish that my master would go and see this prophet in Samaria. He would heal him from leprosy. Yeah. She was bold. Yeah. And she wasn't intimidated by his power, by his position, or his prestige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She saw his pain. Yeah. Called it by name. Knew a pain reliever. Uh -huh. Good God of mine. said, you need to go find him. Y'all ain't talking to me. And every once in a while, you, you, you know, you got to have folks in your life. Yeah, yeah, they can look past your job title. They can look past your bank account. They can look past what you drive out there. They can look past what kind of house you stay in. And can see your sickness. Can see your loneliness. Can see you got a need and that you are really hurt. We need people who will call us out on our problems. We need people in our lives that can point out the blind spots in our lives. We need folks in our lives yeah, they're going to say you're on the edge and you're about to fall over. You need four C's in your life. Y'all ain't talking to me. Number one, you need somebody who's concerned about you. That's going to tell you the truth. Number two, you need somebody who's committed to you. They will walk through the pain with you. They love you that much. They are committed. You, you need somebody in your life uh, 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 that's confident. You know, that 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 has the, the knowledge and the strength to help you along the way. And you need someone who's confidential. That won't have your business all on Facebook. Child, they can't go in here. They had to get them a pack of hot dogs and bologna. They brought their snotty nose children over there. You don't need folks like that in your life. There's two types of folks in, in the world. You have balcony people. And you have basement people. Y'all gonna pray with me? Basement people drag you down. Balcony people strive to lift you up. And I don't know about you, but I need some balcony folks in my life that will pull me up when I'm weak. That can pull me up when things are hard in my life. Y'all praying with me? So after, after they got word from this little girl, Name and went to the king and said, I want to go to Israel. The king said, I'm going to send you a letter. Good God Almighty, you take that to the king. And I just want to pause right here and say, it is possible to be in the right place and speak to the wrong person. <laughs> Name it and enter Israel. He was in the right place, but he spoke to the wrong person. He had no business going to the king. The king couldn't help him. Matter of fact, the king to the king. The king couldn't help him yeah, and thought he was trying to pick a fight. The fact, is, the fact is, many people come to church every Sunday. They speak to the wrong person every Sunday. They speak to their friends. They speak to the church members. They speak to the classmates. They even speak to the uh, pew sitter that sit next to them every Sunday. And though they are in church, yeah, they won't speak to the right person. And that's Jesus. If you ain't coming to church to speak to Jesus, 
You ain't coming to church to pray to Jesus and sing a song unto Jesus. What you coming to church for? This ain't no club. So it's possible that you can be in the right place talking to the wrong person. Make sure when we come to church, you coming for Jesus. You ain't coming to show off your outfit. Yeah. Listen, y'all. You can't buy nobody's love. Y'all missed that. You can't buy nobody's love. Men, stop blowing your money. Women, stop looking for a man with a bag. They are there as long as the money there. When the money gone, they gone. Y'all, oh, y'all missed that. See, I'm in the word right here. Y'all better look at the word. The word said, it, it says it right here. Where we at? Where we at? It says it right here in verse number, verse number uh, five. Yeah, verse number five. It said, good God of mine. Now, the servant woman didn't tell him nothing about you got to bring something. This man had packed up 750 pounds worth of silver. 150 pounds worth of gold. Then he bought 10 Gucci outfits. Good God of mine. Put all of them and head it into town. Good. Now, in today's economy, that's $5 million worth of stuff that he had. You can't buy a blessing. You can't buy a prayer. Yeah, you, uh, you know, he, he, he showed up. Yeah, with his horses and chariots. I'm somebody. You better look at me. I'm somebody. But last time I checked, I can't go to Walmart on aisle six and pick up a blessing. I can't go, yeah. I can't go on aisle number nine and pick up some deliverance. No, that comes from God and God alone. Y'all missing that? So he left from the king and went to find the preacher. He went to find, yeah, Elijah. And when he gets there, he pulls up in his Rolls Royce and his Benz and Mercedes. Yeah, because he had him and his crew with him. And that's supposed to move the preacher. That don't move the preacher. Matter of fact, he didn't even get up out of his chair from looking at Colorado Boulders yesterday. Yeah, he stayed in his chair. Get Dion do that thing. Good God of money. Well, excuse me. I looked at that game. I've been following them guys. And I want to go out to Denver and see them boys play in real life. Yeah, and he pronounces Jesus. And Elisha didn't even get up. But rather he sent his servant to the door. Servant opened up the door. Hey, all you got to do is go down the Jordan River. Dip seven times and you're going to be here. Shut the door on. Now, Naaman is pissed. Now, Naaman is upset. Now, he's very hot. Now, I came down this dirty, dusty road to come see this joker. And he ain't got enough sense to get up out of his chair and come out here and do a magic show for me. That's what he said. I don't want him to wave his hand in front of me and do all this hocus pocus. And so he was mad. He was upset. And he stormed off. He thought, it says in verse number 11. And that's the problem where sinners mess up right there. Instead of praying and crying out to the Lord, they thought. When you start assuming what God's going to do and how he's going to do, you're going to mess up every time. God is simple, y'all. Stop trying to make it that, that God is so deep. God is simple. He said, all I need you to do is go to the river and dip seven times. And he said, oh, man, all this good water around here, all the good clean water. Why he can pick one of the other rivers? Why he got to pick the most dirtiest, muddiest river that you can think of? But thank God he had somebody in his crew that had enough sense. In verse number 13, one of the officers came up. Now, if he would have asked you to do something hard, you would have did it. So since he asked you something simple to do, why don't you go down there? Put your ego to the side. Because this story, see, y'all missed the whole story. This story ain't about the leprosy. The story is about his pride. He thought he was all that. He thought he was, so it was about his pride that really needed to be broken. You got to humble yourself 
and be obedient to what God tell you to do. Y'all yeah. remember that song back in the day? Dip, baby, dip. Come on now, dip. Oh. <laughs> Every once in a while, you got to dip for Jesus. You better dip. And, and, and the Bible says you're supposed to dip seven times. Six times wouldn't have been good enough. Five times wouldn't have been good. Six and a half wouldn't have been good enough. You got to dip seven times. Dip for the Father. Dip for the Son. Dip for the Holy Ghost. Dip for your salvation. Dip for your peace. Dip for your joy. Dip for your hope. You got to dip for Jesus. So enough when he finally humbled himself. He started dipping. All of a sudden, his skin started turning back. The right color. All of a sudden, the Bible says his skin turned back the color of a young child. Good God Almighty, he was healed because he was obedient. Your blessings is tied to your obedience. When you start obeying the Lord and what the Lord tells you to do, that's when you will start getting your blessing. Your blessing don't come until you start being obedient. Y'all ain't talking to me. But I'm so glad that we got a God. Yeah, we got a Savior by the name of Jesus that went to the same river over two yeah, yeah, over two thousand years ago. He went to the Jordan River and got baptized in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. I know I'm right because the Bible says the heavens opened up and God started speaking. The Bible says like a dove that represents the Holy Spirit and Jesus was the Son. You got a picture of the Trinity right there. Now I'm so glad that Jesus walked this earth for 33 long years. And I'm so glad that he was obedient to his heavenly father. And I'm so glad even when they spit on his face, even when they pour a hair on his beard, he still remained faithful. And good God Almighty, they let him put him with nails in one hand. And they let him put nails in the other hand. They hung him high and stretched him wide. And I'm so glad that the story don't stop right there. That he died on the cross. For you and I. But not only did he die on the cross for us. The Bible says they took him down and put him in the bar man tomb. And he stayed there Friday evening. He stayed there all Saturday. And he stayed there all Saturday night. But somebody said early Sunday morning. He got up with all power. And I'm so glad that same power over 2,000 years is the same power that can get you up out of your situation. If you're just willing to go down. And dip in the name of Jesus. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he? Ain't he? Ain't he all right? All over the building, let us stand. But yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, God. Jesus, your personal Lord and Savior. I, I want to introduce you to Yeshua. You the lily in the valley, the bright morning star. The one that stands at the door and knocks. And if you're willing to open the door, he'll come in and sup with you. Fellowship with you. The church doors is open. Would that be one? I promise you. Tomorrow ain't promised to none of us. Even next Sunday ain't promised to us. If you was to close your eyes, and if you was to die right now, would you open your eyes in heaven or open up your eyes in hell? And if you're not sure, I'd rather for you to come and get it right with the Lord today. Secondly, maybe someone gave their life to the Lord, but you had a relationship, you had a fellowship. You need to get it underneath the blood, repent, dust yourself off, and continue to move forward. Then, thirdly, maybe you're looking for a church home. There's no such thing as a perfect church. There's no such thing as perfect people.
There's no such thing as a perfect pastor. You can't get perfection out of imperfection. But we do serve a perfect God. And won't you come? Then lastly, if anyone stands in need of prayer, we'll pray with you, we'll pray for you. Sunday. We normally go 10 to 11. We would love to have you. Until next time, God bless you. God keep you. That is my prayer.